morning, everyone. Morning. Welcome to Christ Church Boroughfair on this uh, second Sunday of Easter. A very warm welcome to you who are here worshiping with us in the building and also those who are joining us online. We hope that wherever you are, you'll find the, uh, the spirit, you'll feel the Spirit of God moving in this, in this space, both, both physical and virtual. Uh, announcement about the hymns, uh, though, because we're having a hybrid worship where we have people in the building and at home, we're not putting the words in front of the screen anymore uh, because it's cumbersome and distracting to arrange that. But if uh, you'd like to follow along with the hymns, on our uh, website, on the Join Us Live, on the Christchurch Motor Fair website, you can uh, download the, you know, the bulletin for this week with the, all the lyrics to the hymns. It's also in the comment section on Facebook Live. And it's also in the comment section, a link to that page in the Facebook Live feed right now. On that note, uh, we begin with our opening hymn, Good Christians All Rejoice and Sing, which is Common Praise 211. <laughs> Almighty and eternal God, the strength of those who believe and the hope of those who doubt, 
May we who have not seen have faith and receive the fullness of Christ's blessing, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our service continues with the readings from Holy Scripture. Our first reading is from Acts chapter 4, verses 32 to 35. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as had, they had the need. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The appointed song for today is Psalm 133, and I would ask that you respond with the words in bold. Oh, how good and pleasant it is. It is like fine oil upon the head, upon the beard of Aaron. It is like the dew of Hermon. For there the Lord has ordained the blessing, life forevermore. And together we pray. Creator of the universe, from whom all things come, to whom all things return, give your people such unity of heart and mind that all the world may grow in the life of your eternal kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our second reading, our second reading is from 1 John chapter 1, verse 1, to chapter 2, verse 2. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testified to it and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you may also have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel this morning comes from, from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. John 20, 19 through 31. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Lord, Glory Lord, to you, Lord, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. 
Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. I come to you in the name of the Holy Trinity, the source of all, the incarnate word, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Doubting Thomas. It's all too easy to be hard on poor old Thomas. After all, we know the whole story. We know how it turns out because we've been hearing the story of Christ's resurrection all our lives. Yet, just for demonstrating a wee bit of healthy skepticism, a completely understandable skepticism in the circumstances, Thomas gets branded as Doubting Thomas for all time. And it's not a com complimentary name, Doubting Thomas. Maybe if you were called Thomas the Rational Skeptic, or Thomas the Realist, or Thomas with Reservations, then it wouldn't be so bad. But Doubting Thomas, doubt is such a loaded word. It's more loaded than than skepticism. Skepticism sounds scientific or philosophical, but doubt has moral undertones. To doubt is more than, than just not believe. It's also to not have trust. So in our collective imagination, we have this whole moral judgment against this fellow who didn't believe based on what his friends told him. Now, I recall as a child, I would confuse certain biblical figures, you know, names kind of sound familiar, and, and you know, you go to Sunday school every week and you hear all these names and they all get jumbled up. Uh, Peter and Thomas were those that I would confuse, not because their names are similar, but because they both did something that was perceived as bad, and it starts with a D, doubt and deny. And, you know, and I find it strange and unfair to Thomas that he should be forever yoked with this, this, uh, this, this expression, doubting Thomas. When, when Peter gets off scot-free, we don't have an expression about Peter. Why don't we have denying Peter? I mean, what Peter did was much worse than what Thomas did. I mean, Peter... Uh, denied not even knowing Jesus when he was being car carried away to be tried and crucified. That sounds like a, mu a much uh, more serious uh, uh, crime or sin. But leaving aside all these, these layers of shame that 
generation of culture have heaped on Thomas, whether or not justified, what did he actually do that was so terrible? Let's recall what the Gospel today says. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had been were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. And then continues on and further down it says, But Thomas, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. So when it come, what it comes down to is Thomas only wants the same proof that all the others have received. Because he wasn't there. They actually were there. And this is not an unreasonable wish. And surely not a reason to brand him as the doubting apostle for all eternity. Thomas does not really doubt Jesus. He doubts the testimony of the other eleven apostles, other ten apostles. And can you blame him? I mean, considering all they had been through in their recent lives, that traumatic experience of loss. Perhaps Thomas felt that the other apostles were in denial. They were going through, they were working through the stages of grief. Perhaps he thought they were deluded or hallucinating seeing a vision of Jesus produced by their grieving, traumatized psyches. Or perhaps we're missing the point with all this speculation over who Thomas was doubting or whom he trusted. I think if we try to figure out this story forensically, we'll get nowhere with it. I mean, if we, when it comes down to it, we're talking about the wounds in Jesus' body. Yet, just moments before, Jesus shows up in a locked room without a door opening. He just appears. Um, so maybe we're so focused on these wounds and the hands and the fingers in these wounds and Thomas's doubt about the whole situation that we miss the greater meaning of this story. Have you ever noticed or thought about it that the resurrection appearances in the Gospels are very different from Jesus' appearances when, before his crucifixion in his public ministry? During his public ministry, Jesus is often found surrounded by throngs of people preaching in very public places and doing very public things like you know, cleansing the temple and, and interacting with the Pharisees and the scribes. But the risen Christ's appearance in the Gospel, all of them that are mentioned in the Gospels themselves, are not in front of huge crowds, not in the public squares, not on the Temple Mount. And he doesn't appear to those who would uh, challenge his existence, like the Pharisees. The risen Christ's appearances all occur in private, intimate settings. For example, to Mary Magdalene in the garden, to the apostles in the locked room, at an in intimate dinner at Emmaus when he was known in the breaking of the bread. Likewise, in today's gospel, we find the risen Christ appearing to the apostles in a closed, private, intimate setting. But in the first instance, Thomas is not there. He is initially denied this direct encounter with the risen Lord. <clears throat> this story, I believe, is not about a need for Thomas to verify the physicality of Jesus' body by probing around with his finger in Jesus' side. And this, 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 uh, this scene is portrayed very graphically by this uh, famous painting by Caravaggio. If you don't know what I'm talking about, look on the Facebook invite I sent out, and I put that painting there. It's, a, it's kind of uh, 
disturbing image you know, put, of Thomas putting his finger in Jesus' side. But rather, it's a need for Thomas to experience the risen Christ directly, to encounter his living Lord in person. So far from being the doubter who doesn't trust Jesus, I would argue, on the contrary, Thomas is a model of sorts for the faith that we are to have, the faith we ultimately must have. Now, we can hear about the risen Christ from uh, what others have reported in the Gospels, what other people have said. And don't get me wrong, hearing the good news from others is important and necessary. But if it only stays there, just hearing from others, hearing the good news remains an indirect and intellectual exercise. The other apostles could tell Thomas about their encounter with the risen Christ as much as they wanted, but it didn't become real for Thomas until he encountered Christ himself. And it doesn't become real for us until we encounter the risen Christ. Christ in, in Holy Communion. Christ in the face of our neighbor. Christ within our own heart. Then, like Thomas, we can declare, my Lord and my God. As I was writing this sermon, an old gospel hymn came surging up from my subconscious, one that I hadn't heard in years in church, because it's not in uh, any of our Anglican hymnals, it's not, in the, it's not in common praise, it's not in the old blue hymnal, and it's not in the um, red Anglican United hymnal that some of you may remember. But it definitely was in the United Methodist hymnal I knew growing, growing up, and this hymn was usually sung around Easter. And this is one of those hymns that has always uh, stuck with me throughout these years. And at the offertory, per my request, uh, we will hear this song in full, this hymn. So I won't quote it in full here. But I will leave you with the words of the refrain, which I think illustrates the faith that St. Thomas models for us. He lives, he lives. Christ Jesus lives today. <coughs> He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives? He lives within my heart. Amen. Let us stand and confess the faith of our baptism in the words of the Apostles' Creed, as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. In our prayers today, we give thanks for God's presence among us. We thank Him for the gift of salvation and for His faithfulness toward us. We remember that we are God's creation and we ask that He bless us in all that we do that we may be faithful to our personal calling. We pray for this universal church and for healing in the world. We pray for peace, for renewal, for justice, and for a desire to live in faith.
fellowship with all of God's children. Lord, in your mercy. We remember the leaders of all nations, praying that they may be guided by your spirit of truth and mercy. We pray for their people and their countries, asking that you bless those areas of need, remembering especially the children and those living in abject poverty. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for our own country as we seek to find better ways of using our resources and protecting our environment. We pray for the unemployed, for students who are completing their academic year, for those who are planning to retire, and for those thinking of new ways of serving their community. We remember before you the bulk of the workforce who are struggling to provide for their families. And we ask for your guidance and blessing that we may be open to the many gifts and to the abundance that you have for all your sons and daughters. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for our home parish of Christ Church, for the many ministries here, and for all who serve so faithfully. And we remember especially those on our prayer roster this week, praying for General Moran and Sylvia Runs and their family, Wayne and Lisa and their family, and Alberta and Alicia and their family. And we ask, Lord, that you continue to bless and care for them as they serve you in this community and beyond. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for those in need, lifting up to you, Lord, those who have asked for our prayers. For Colleen and Drew, for Anne and Eleanor, for Christopher, Shirley and Art, Mary and Robbie Prue. And we continue to pray for those who are grieving for the loss of loved ones. And we ask, Lord, that you encircle them with your love and your peace. And I invite your prayers now at this time, either quietly or loud, for others on your heart. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord, we bring before you our own needs and concerns. giving thanks that you were able to provide and heal amidst the greatest need. We offer you our blessing of thanksgiving and love, trusting in our covenant that we have with you. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Confirm and strengthen in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. 
Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please exchange the sign of the peace uh, in a distant, non-tactile way or in the comment section below. Peace be with you.
galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will they were created and they have their being. And glory to you forever and ever. From the primal elements you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the stewards of creation. Glory to you forever and ever. But we turn against you and betray your trust, and we turn against one another. Again and again you call us to return. Through the prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law. In the fullness of time you sent your son, born of a woman, to be our savior. He was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. By his death he opened to us the way of freedom and peace. Glory to you forever and ever. Therefore we praise you joining in the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with those in every generation who have looked to you in hope, to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God in power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, Lord, our God, for sending us Jesus, the Christ. For the night he was handed over to suffering and death, took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his friends and said, Take this and eat it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup of wine. He gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Glory to you forever and ever. Gracious God, we recall the death of your Son, Jesus Christ. We proclaim his resurrection and ascension, and we look with expectation for his coming as the Lord of all the nations. We who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit now bring you these gifts. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon this offering of your church, that we who eat and drink at this holy table may share the divine light, life of Christ our Lord. Glory to you forever and ever. Pour out your Spirit upon the whole earth and make it your new creation. Gather your church together from the ends of the earth into your kingdom where peace and justice are revealed, that we, with all your people of every language, race, and nation, may share the banquet you have promised. Through Christ, and through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, creator of all. Glory, glory to you forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Lord, we died with you on the cross. Now, now we are raised to new life. life. We were buried in your tomb. Now, now we, we share, share in your resurrection. Live in us that we may live in you. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. As you come up for communion, Remember that I can't speak to you uh, when I'm handing it, it, putting it in your hands, but remember, in your, here, in your heart, in your, in your soul, when I place the, the host in your hands, the body of Christ given for you.
Let us pray. Father, we have seen with our eyes and touched with our hands the bread of life. Strengthen our faith that we may grow in love for you and for each other. Through Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. Amen. Amen. And together we pray. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. May the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with everything good, that you may do his will, working in you that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and with you, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Announcements. Uh, Coffee Fellowship continues at 11.30 because of, uh, we're having in-person services, so uh, if you want to join us for Coffee Fellowship, uh, please uh, uh, <coughs> join us any time after uh, 11.30 from home. Uh, it's, of course, it's not uh, the kind of thing where you have to be there on time. It's a drop-in, and as you, as you wish, sort of uh, thing. Uh, I remind you, do not, uh, when, you, when you leave, please follow the arrows and, and exit up through the sides, and do not congregate in the, in the narthex. Uh, any chatting should happen mass and outside, not in the building. Facebook Live if you have a Facebook account. But if you don't have a Facebook account, and please help those, those who don't, please let them know. You can watch the service live on, the, on our website. So you go to our website and in the top uh, left-hand corner, uh, join us live, and there you can get the service, and also the bulletin is there too. And after the fact, so later in the afternoon, we post the service on the our YouTube channel. And that goes for the Thursday evening service as well. And uh, our Thursday evening, evening prayer service continues uh, at 7 o'clock on Thursday. Uh, please join us for that. We uh, use a variety of uh, evening prayer forms everywhere, everything from a very modern form like uh, the night prayer from the New Zealand Anglican Church or all the way back to uh, traditional BCP. Uh, it varies every week, so please join us. As far as in-person worship, uh, the plan is that we continue meeting for in-person worship Sunday at 10. But you know, as you know, these the situation is constantly evolving, so please stay tuned. But until further notice, the plan is to continue like this. And as always, thank you to Sylvia and Yevgenia for the music, and uh, uh, I think that's that's all the announcements. Anything else? Yes. The recording from last week is also available. Yes, if you want to uh, uh, listen to that that great recording of Jesus Christ is risen today, that our congregation put together, our congregation plus friends and family, uh, it's uh, posted on our YouTube channel, so you can. Enjoy it multiple times and share it. And I think that is all. And now we will close with our uh, final hymn, Now the Greek Blade Rises, which is Common Praise 237.
this church, we are the church, and we have come together to celebrate God's love and to be nourished and strengthened for service in God's mission. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.